Every time I put out one of those opening a studio videos, it seems like some of you guys love it and some of you guys hate it. I'm not one to harp on negative comments, but there's a common thread of you will never make money doing this. And I want to talk about that. As we talk, I'm going to work on this snare. By the way, this is the dial tune snare. Oh, get it the right way around. I adore this thing for studio use. But you can see the cable. The cable on this thing starting to fray, so I have to change the cable. Luckily, when you buy one of these things, they send you enough to redo it and a handy little Allen wrench. No, they're not sponsoring the video, but you should check them out. They are cool. But Sonable is sponsoring this video. More on that later. So inevitably, every time I put out one of these videos, the comments, if you want to make a million dollars in the music business, you got to start out with $2 million. There's just like any business, there's any number of ways you can look at it. Down to the gear that I invest in, building that I have, the location. There's multiple different ways to think about each one of those, right? Where I am versus where you are, geographically, we're gonna have a whole lot of different circumstances that play into this. Cost of living, property taxes, uh, income tax, if you even have income tax. Where I am, cost of living is very low, very, very low compared to some larger cities where normal music hubs like me are. So my idea of being very, very financially comfortable is probably a lot different than some of you looking somewhere else. So I have been able to make different financial decisions along the way because I don't need to make an exorbitant amount of money. My overhead for this building, when I was getting started here, was definitely difficult to overcome. It's a fraction of places just a few hours to the south of me in Nashville. I've said this in different videos that I don't think I could do what I do in Nashville. Not that my talent isn't good enough. I'm not even gonna put myself in the same ring as some of those guys. All I'm saying is it's possible to do this in just about any market. You don't have to be in an LA. You don't have to be in a New York. You don't have to be in a Nashville. And there are plenty of places that have much lower cost of living and much lower overhead for you to run a business like this. Because it's music. People travel, sure. If you were in Nashville or LA, there's probably a lot more going on. There's a lot more people walking, but normally in a business like this, it's typically not walking clients who will become repeat clients. And the ones who really, really want to work with you are willing to travel. I'm in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Musically, if you look from the outside, I think this is a great place to be because I'm in the middle of so many other different music hubs, but really it, it hasn't mattered. People fly in to record. And I don't mean that as a brag. I, I'm not trying to come across like, like that at all. All I'm saying is you can make something like this work wherever and people will travel to do it. And now it's time for a quick word from our sponsor, Sonable. Sonable just came out with a couple new metering tools, True Level and True Balance. Let me talk about True Balance for a second. True Balance will really quickly allow you to see where the energy in your mix is in relation to certain genres or reference tracks that you upload yourself into the plugin. You can get a breakdown on how the low end, mid range, and high end of your mix stands against references, as well as the mono compatibility and the stereo spread. Obviously we shouldn't be mixing with our eyes, but tools like this help me get a better product faster more consistent. I have been using tools like this for a long time just to give me a quick idea when I feel like I've lost perspective sometimes. Until December 9th, you can pick up True Balance for a lower introductory price before it raises. And if you want the quick one-two punch, you can purchase it in a bundle with True Level, which will give you quick feedback on how your mix is standing up from a loudness perspective to other mixes and references just like True Balance does for the EQ. Check it out at sonable.com. Back to the video. <laughs> There we go. Wow. Oh boy, that thing got torn up. This snare is seriously one of the coolest things, especially for the type of work that I'm doing where we could do any number of songs in a given day and we're changing the sound of the snare. This is cool. This is really cool. The other thing is people tend to comment that this is a competitive market. I kind of get it. But at the same time, I don't feel like I compete with other engineers around me. That is really caught in there. Mm. 
There it goes, okay. Just to go at some of these head on, some of the comments is to say, there's no music to be made in the music industry. That's bull, flat out. I'm not gonna sit here and say it's easy, but the thing about our industry, if you want it, you gotta work. I work hard. I try to maintain a work-life balance and it's not necessarily easy, but you gotta work. <laughs> you gotta put in your 10,000 hours. It's gotta come from somewhere, period, just to get the skill. You gotta make decent sounding records at the heart of it. Past that, this is a customer service job. This is a sales job. This is being an amateur psychologist. It's all of those things wrapped up. You have to genuinely love making music. You have to genuinely love fixing a snare drum when it needs fixing. You have to love talking to people and figuring out what's in their head. You have to love the challenge and the struggle. You have to love coming in to work every day and not necessarily knowing what you're gonna work on. This industry is built for people who cannot work behind a desk. Doing that would kill me, or at least parts of my soul. <laughs> and I'm not gonna say it's an easy job. It's not, I mean, this is YouTube. You talk about my struggles, sure, but I also talk about the fun stuff. And there's plenty of fun stuff in this job. Look at what we get to do. Whether you're in a basement studio or you're making records in your bedroom, you're making music. It doesn't have to be that complicated. I'm very thankful for what I get to do and the space that I get to do it in. But to shoot down other people's aspirations of doing the same thing because the music industry is dying, I don't think it's dying. I think your corner of the music industry is dying and you don't know what to do. Music is always gonna be around. It's always gonna be around. It was the earliest form of expression we had as a species. It's not going anywhere. The ways and methods in which it is created and released are going to change and they will continue to change as technology changes. And so we have to adapt, but that's not a bad thing. If you love this, you're gonna roll with the punches because they're not really punches. It's the whole thing moving and evolving and getting better. What would you rather have? A music industry like what it was 60 or 70 years ago where it was highly guarded. Only certain people were allowed to participate based on any number of factors or what we have now. Something inclusive where we have any number of genres you can possibly imagine because so many people out there are able to express themselves however they see fit. I like the music industry. There are aspects of it that I don't like. There are bad actors in this industry just like every other industry. If you had a safe desk job, you're gonna encounter the same stuff. I have labels that I will never work with again because they screwed me. My wife, who works in a completely different field, has individuals she will never work for again because they screwed her. The benefit we have in this industry is that it's small. Everybody talks. <laughs> And if there's a bad actor, chances are a lot of people know about it. And who knows, maybe if you're one of the few complaining about the industry itself, unfortunately you've, you may have been on the wrong side of it and you genuinely got screwed. And I know there's people out there who have been victims in scenarios like that. And my heart goes out to you because I've seen it and I've even been on the receiving end of it. But the other part of it is you are one of the bad actors. You are one of those people who doesn't want to see it change. Or maybe you're just frustrated with your circumstance. There's no easy button in any job anywhere. Just like there's no easy button in owning a studio. Of course there isn't. The benefit we have is that if you genuinely love music, down to your soul, down to who you freaking are at the bare bottom, then as long as you can keep the lights on and food on the table, you're successful. <laughs> I mean, define that for yourself. You don't need somebody telling you, like, you'll never make a million dollars in the music industry. Do you, do you need to? Do you need to make a million dollars to be happy? If so, maybe this isn't for you. I don't know where you should go. Maybe hedge fund manager, I have no idea. I can only speak to my experience, the knowledge I have from the people that I work with in and around the music industry. Cause in the last video I said, my entire life is made up of music in some way, shape or form. And I am grateful for that. This was the absolute dream. 
But what I can tell you is the people who would be my competitors are more often than not my friends. We don't compete with each other and try to steal clients. People are coming to a producer because of how they produce or they're getting a certain mixer because of how they mix. You're often not stealing someone else's lunch. You're creating an atmosphere in which more people want to buy lunch. <laughs> it's like making a food court. If you have one restaurant open in a food court, I would tend not to eat there. <laughs> but if there's three or four options, five, six, 12, 13 options, I'm not gonna blink an eye at eating in any one of them. And I'll probably go back and try some of the other ones but I'll eventually find my favorite and all the other people who show up in that food court are gonna find their favorite too. You don't wanna be the only restaurant in a food court. How the heck did I get to that illustration? I love that my intention was to fix this snare and I've just been standing here ranting. If you wanna get into the nitty gritty of it real quick, I think a lot of the investment argument can come down to how you think about your workspace. Um, I'm buying gear most of the time to try to get a good resale value. Buying good gear used, the cost of ownership for that is actually really, really low. Yeah, you have to have some cash up front, but slowly working and collecting over time, you can amass a, a vast collection quickly, I promise you. <laughs> Learning to solder is the biggest money saver you could possibly have doing something like this. Buying broken gear and fixing it, that's how I have some of my awesome gear that I have. Or being able to build preamps from kits and saving tens of thousands of dollars that way. And then being able to then resell it for more than I paid. So my cost of ownership is negative, essentially. <laughs> Eventually when I'm done with this space, I'll be in a good position. I own most of this stuff. I'm looking around and I don't see anything that's not paid for. I, I saw some of those comments coming up on some of the latest videos and this is just a response to that. I don't mean to come across as mad. I don't want to discourage people from chasing what they really, really want to do. Because I value chasing what makes you happy over just making money. And I think you have to be like that to work in an industry like this. And so it bums me out hard when, when people try to dump on the industry as a whole like that. The music industry is not perfect. I think we can all agree on that. But when you're one of the few who you know you're built for this, and I don't think I'm the best engineer in the world. I don't think I'm the best mixer or the best mastering engineer there ever. I'm far from it. But I know to my core, I was built for this. And I have a blast doing it. If you guys feel the same way, let me know down in the comments. Let me know if comments like that, that you'll never make money, bug you. Let me know if you feel like you don't make money. Let's talk about it. I'm not sure if I could answer every question out there, but seeing what other situations are, sometimes having an outside perspective can shed light on something that maybe you didn't realize. So let me know down in the comments, what's your experience here? Do you do this for a living? Do you do this as a side gig? Do you have a full-time job and this is a hobby? Similarly, do you think, do you feel that this industry and what we do is cutthroat or do you feel a camaraderie with those around you? Do you operate with the scarcity mindset or do you operate with the raising tides raise all ships mentality? Genuinely curious. I don't wanna be the only optimist in the room. <laughs> uh, the weird thing about that is my wife will tell you that I'm a realist and more often than not, I tend to look at the negative side of what's possible. And that's not how I view this industry. And this is just one person's opinion. But from somebody who normally sees things very, very negative and will tend, tend to jump to the extreme pretty quick, I don't see the industry as inherently bad. I don't see this as something that's gonna fail soon. I don't see this as something where everyone will fail or even a select few will succeed. I think there's a lot of work out there to be had. There's a lot of music making happening. There's a, a creative revolution that's been happening for a long, long time to tap into. Anyway, let me know down in the comments if you guys agree with me. As always, I'm Resident Loser Jeremy. Subscribe if you like this kind of stuff. Like it if you liked it. Dislike it if you didn't, but hit it twice. I'll see you guys in the next one.